Blacksmith Institute is a New York-based nonprofit organization founded in 1999, and we have committed to mitigating the human health effects of the industrial waste, air emission, and also hazardous material. Mercury is a global pollutant as it does not only cause severe health impacts to the workers and people live nearby, but it also will contaminate both international water and air. In Indonesia, as in any other countries, the artisanal and small-scale gold mining have been practiced as an alternative livelihood and there is a widespread use of mercury. Kalimantan is one of the hotspots in Indonesia and Blacksmith Institute have been working with Yayasan Tambuak Sinta in central Kalimantan to provide technical assistance to reduce the mercury contamination and also to conduct the health education about the danger of mercury. Here, in Kuala Kurun and in other large towns along the Kahian River, gold shops buy gold dust produced by river dredges. These gold shops use mercury to separate the gold from the sand. The gold dust is weighed, then mixed with mercury on the spot. This separates the residual sand from the gold. The small ball of amalgam that is created is then burned to remove the mercury from the gold once again. Gold shops burn small balls of mercury amalgam throughout the day. When the amalgam is burned, the mercury vaporizes into the atmosphere. To reduce the impact of these emissions, YTS has developed a water box condenser system that can be fitted to the existing chimneys in the gold shops. The mercury condenses in the water box and can be recycled and used again. This cheap and simple piece of equipment can recapture and recycle most of the vaporizing mercury. In addition to the water box condenser, YTS distributes stainless steel retorts. Highly efficient these factory made retorts can recapture 95% of the mercury from the amalgam. In this way, YTS is working to reduce the overall level of contamination in three towns along the Kahayan River. However, on the Barito River to the east, YTS is facing a much bigger challenge. In a location known as Montmuro area, Thousands of artisanal and small-scale gold miners are extracting hard rock with high levels of gold and silver. Unfortunately, when they are doing this, they add enormous quantities of mercury to the grinding circuit in a process known as the hole or amalgamation. So here we are at Mount Muro, which is the airport built by Straits Resources. Basically, it's a very large functioning gold mine with about 1,000 people on site most of the time. The company uses no mercury to process its ore, relying instead on an up-to-date cyanide processing plant and tailings dam. However, there are also thousands of small-scale miners digging within the concession area. 
These small-scale operations use massive quantities of mercury on a daily basis. This massive contamination problem began first here in 1999, when illegal mercury and cyanide processing technologies first spread to this region from North Sulawesi. For the past 10 years, these artisanal mining activities have been responsible for releasing 50 tons of mercury into the environment each year. YTS has been taking a close look at the many small-scale processing units that exist in the area to see what can be done to solve this problem. We're going to have a look at the processing that takes place in this shed, how much mercury they're using, how they're grinding the ore, and uh, what they're doing with the secondary processing using cyanide. The rock comes like this, as hard rock, quartz, and then it gets broken down by hand in the field. They put it in sacks and then they bring it by truck here. And then they've got to break it down into sand. So it carries a little bit of gold. It might not be visible gold, but it's in there. The ore gets put inside to the trommel together with steel bars like this, which grind over hours and destroy the rock, pulverizing it and turning it into very fine sand. They're closing them up to run the second cycle because one cycle's never enough. They always run two or three cycles, sometimes up to four cycles. Each time they do that, they're going to put the mercury in there before they run it. So uh, the mercury is used and reused and reused each time. Uh, the only loss is what goes into the amalgam ball. This amalgam here is the product of four trommels. There's 24 <laughs> trommels in the shed. Uh, so each trommel has to be taken and processed individually. And this guy right now is pouring mercury directly into the bowl. And then he's going to squeeze all of that mercury through cloth. <laughs> the mercury is coming out. And what's going to remain inside the cloth is just the amalgam ball like this, together with the precious metal. You can see what he managed to squeeze out was all of this mercury that was in the amalgam. So they've actually removed that mercury from the amalgam so that they have less mercury in the amalgam when they burn it. So that's, that's the finished product right there. About one, about one kilo or more of amalgam there. So eight, 800 grams or more of that would be mercury, and uh, 200 grams would be precious metal, uh, mostly silver. Now he's going to weigh it. Boom. So okay, we, we were 800 grams of amalgam and 80% of that will be mercury. So that's about 640, 640 grams of mercury. Now that's, that's the product of six, six uh, trommels. So you have to multiply that by four. So today they'll probably produce around four kilos of amalgam uh, this one morning. When they finish, they will use water to wash the sand out. The sand will just wash straight down below so that actually later on it can be bagged. And they'll take those bags and they'll take it over there to the cyanide. Uh, to the cyanide vat because the cyanide vat is where the secondary processing of this material takes place.